Hi there beautiful souls, welcome or welcome back to the Living Simply channel, a high vibe safe space where we explore all things spirituality, esotericism and self-transformation. Today marks the beginning of a new astrology journey in my new series Astro Tea Time, where I will answer your questions about astrology. If you have any question in mind, feel free to DM me on Instagram and I would love to review it in a future episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you stay up to date when the new episodes come out. So today's question is something that I receive and you know hear quite often from people. This can be newbies, people who really you know don't know much about astrology, or people who actually had their birth chart done and are a little bit more advanced, but still don't you know don't wrap their heads around this this concept. The question is, do I have a bad chart? Okay, <laughs> okay, so grab, grab yourself a cup of tea, relax, because we're gonna dive right into it, and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about having a good or bad chart. Okay, so the short, condensed answer is no. <laughs> there is no such thing as having a bad chart, and that's the T. <laughs> no, really, there is no such thing as a bad chart or a good chart in astrology. Actually, we speak of challenging charts because every aspect, every negative placement that you may have, can express itself differently based on the use that you make of it. Let me give you an example to make this a lot more practical. Let's suppose somebody has his Mars in a water sign. Mars is our inner fire. This is what motivates us to move forward, to wake up in the morning. This is uh, your will, your drive, your um, just how you fight, how you brawl, how you you know go get things in life. And um, in a water placement, you can imagine that having your fire, you know, <laughs> having water on top of that can be problematic because one, that could, that fire could dissipate. So you, you could end up being passive aggressive or just not take any form of action, be too slow, um, be butthurt because emotions are involved and, you know, just be overly sensitive and um, secretive about taking action which is not a good thing, yes. But is this a bad placement? No. The planet is in detriment, yes. It has a challenge, more of a challenging uh, time than another person who has it, I don't know, in um, another element, let's say a fire element, where it is kind of at home. You know, Mars is at home in fire elements, but that does not make it any better. Let me tell you why. This person who could be passive aggressive, not taking any actions, lazy, you know, um, overly sensitive, over their, you know, uh, evolution in life, over experiences and, you know, just wisdom. The more, wi the more wise they become, the more they're going to realize that they need to put systems in place, boundaries to protect their energy, to actually not bottle their emotions up to not be uh, two-faced, you know, and not express their rage when they do feel like that, and to not get their sensitivity caught up in how they take actions. And the more they do this, the more they understand these things, the more they're going to be able to express the higher octave of Mars in water signs, which is someone who is very emotionally mature, someone who is able to use their emotions as fuel. Can you imagine using your emotions as fuel to move in life? You would be able to protect your loved ones, to actually put your heart into every step that you take, to be emotionally involved in everything that you do, which is amazing. And we need people like that. And this is the thing. I hope that you get it from this example. Every single sign, every single placement in astrology can be either low or vibrational if you don't do any work and don't learn the lessons that you need to learn in order to move forward, or it can go higher. And the higher you go, the better that energy is going to play out. 
So it comes down to one single thing, you. Yes, you and how you use that sign and how mature you are. You know, are you aware? Are you a conscious person? Or are you gonna, you know, fall back and just become the stereotype of your placement? Then in that, in this scenario, yes, you do have a bad chart. <laughs> if you're not gonna use it correctly and if you're not gonna do your best to actually learn the lessons that your chart is trying to give you, then yes, we can say that you are in deep trouble. <laughs> you're in deep shit and life is doomed. As you can imagine, this is not the case. Life is about expansion and human beings, they thrive on challenges. So somebody who has, you know, lots of trines and sextiles and by the way, if you are not familiar with the, the terms that I'm using, subscribe to my channel because I will explain this all in detail in future videos. But anyways, to keep this simple, if you have very good placements in your chart, it can be a curse. It can be your downfall. It's like having um, a golden spoon in your mouth or having a child that's overly spoiled. Not all positive placements are good for us. Sometimes those negative placements are blessings in disguise because through hardships, through pain, through trauma, humans can evolve and they can actually become the better versions of themselves. It is only true applying pressure that, that we can have a diamond or, a, you know, a very, very beautiful um, outcome. And the same goes for astrology. So yeah, if, if we want to be very, very specific, the best chart would be something that has a combination of good aspects and kind of challenging aspects. It's only through those two things that you can thrive. If you have way too much positive things, you're going to be lazy and kind of spoiled. You know, everything happens easily for you. You do things very naturally, so you don't need to learn or um, go outside of your comfort zone to grow. The same goes for overly complicated charts. All you do is survive and you don't know how to relax, how to receive. So yeah, just remind yourself, balance is needed. And if you have any, any negative placement or somebody tells you, oh, you have a bad chart, just remind them that the ingredients that you have in your fridge are no good if you are not a good cook. <laughs> it's all about your cooking skills. It doesn't matter if you have amazing carrots and great vegetables and fruits laying around, if you don't know how to use them and actually, you know, ruin them <laughs> when you cook them. So having too much comfort in our lives can be a curse. And having difficult placement can actually be a blessing in disguise. And it is up to you to actually decipher which is which and to make the best rational use of all your placements. So to circle back to the question, no, honey, there is no such thing as a bad chart. Everything that you have within your chart is here for a reason. It's here to teach you a lesson or to give you a blessing and a gift, something that you don't have to worry about. So use that to your advantage and make this world a better place. We need all of the placements. We need all the combinations that exist. And trust me, they are endless. They are, there's endless combinations to a personal chart. And that's because we need all of these different humans, different perspectives, different ways of doing things and loving and caring and fighting and being and thinking. We need all of that diversity. So cherish that. Don't look at someone else's chart and be like, oh, I wish I had my sun or my Venus in this place or that one. Like, no, <laughs> you would probably not do well with it. You have what you have and you need to make the best use with it. So on this note, I wish you a very, very blessed week. I am so happy to start this, uh, this little mini series. Drop me your questions by DM on my Instagram page and I will be seeing you next time. Bye bye.